girls today we're going to be talking about the folding knives and multi-tools of bushcrafting now on the channel we spent a lot of time talking about fixed blades and what's best for which applications but today like i said we're going to be talking about the folding knives and multi-tools that are really useful and have proven themselves quite a bit in bushcrafting and wilderness applications now as always please don't forget to comment like share subscribe it helps the channel out a ton okay now let's jump into it so first off, we're gonna start off with folding knives. And I'm not gonna go over every single folding knife, just a handful that kind of check different boxes and uh, are kind of distinguishing in and of themselves. The first is the kind of small folders category. Now in another video that I did or uh, will come out soon, I talked about why you should ditch your small fixed blades in favor of small folding knives and I largely still stand by that and really have stood by that for quite some time. That is simply because if you have a smaller folding knife like this, compacted, it is smaller than a usably small fixed blade and at the same time when you open it up you have a longer, very usable blade and a long or as long as you reasonably can have handle to get a nice good grip on now something like this 5d6 griptilian by benchmade isn't perfect but it is actually pretty darn capable for for most wilderness tasks things such as small camp work like camp work uh, field dressing game animals and doing smaller duty tasks you can even strike the back of it with a ferro rod to start a fire so this is overall a really good consideration for smaller duties and smaller tasks but still also a pretty handy tool to have in your pocket if you are running a larger fixed blade other ones in that category would also be things like the benchmade 535 bug out these guys are also pretty good some people talk about the uh, omega springs breaking in theirs personally mine has yet to do that and i've had this one for quite some time so i doubt it will but 535 bug out and the 56 griptilian are some pretty fantastic options moving on to it and granted this one is not the strongest and most robust is the kind of overbuilt tanky category the adamas especially the original adamases were very strong Knives from Cold Steel that feature the triad lock are also very much in this category of just tanky overbuilt blades that are, like I said, reasonably strong and can be used for medium duty tasks. So those are another option out there. Uh, I will say the Domuses are pretty good. Uh, even if their lock does fail on you, they have a pretty strong blade and you're not going to snap the blade off and you can always just relock it when you're finished with whatever task. So that is the Adamus. The last of the folding knives is going to be the slip joint style and this one is in particular the GEC Pocket Carver. Now all the blades look pretty much like that, you just got a couple smaller ones on that side. So like I said, this is the GEC Pocket Carver and this is just the traditional kind of slip joint pocket knives and this features many different knives of course this one included but this is probably for less industrial tasks very uh mission specific like i said with the pocket carver in particular this is kind of a pocket carving option this is kind of a pocket carving option so if you're looking to distribute or displace some of your knife usage on a smaller easier to care for blade or blades like multiple uh, that's usually where these slip joints kind of shine. They have, like I said, multiple blades on them for different tasks and usually are pretty darn fantastic at doing them. So that is the GEC Pocket Carver and, like I said, traditional carvers as a whole. Mine just has a little pocket slip. Most of them don't, but I definitely prefer to carry it in this because it just gives you a little bit better bulk when it's sitting in your pocket. Moving on to similar knives, we just talked about the traditional slip joint knife. The next is going to be multi-tools, and we're of course going to start off with Victorinox. Now, of course, you do have a slip joint main blade. You also, on this particular model, the Ranger, have a pen blade as well for additional smaller duty tasks. But the greatest thing about things like the Ranger or things like the Victorinox as a whole is you do get a you do get multiple tools, obviously, so it implies multi-tool. So you have things like your saw, you have things like scissors, files, uh, all kinds of good stuff for you to use in many various tasks. So definitely adds a lot of ability to your uh, camp 
your camp life and what you can and can't do. So certainly, I definitely love the Ranger, but Victorinox as a whole are definitely growing on me. I will say even these thicker um, 91 mil, even these thicker 91 mil multi-tools are still very, very pocketable and you can easily throw them in a pocket, forget about it. And whenever you need some kind of tool to do whatever, uh, it is usually there. Another one to consider is going to be the Alox Victorinox Farmer or Farmer X, depending on if you want a scissor or not. This is, of course, just the stock farmer. And uh, thing I will say I do really like about the farmer is you do have a really nice, sizable main blade and a saw and really not too much more else. Of course, you do have the Alox version of the all, which is a really great version. I wish it was on more of Victorinox's tools, but aside from those three tools, you know, you just have uh, your can opener and your bottle opener. So really not much on this tool. And that makes it very slim, very compact and very carryable. So really, if you are gonna go out side and you want something that's going to pair well with, you know, your existing fixed blade your fixed blade, your saw, and your hatchet or ax, really throwing something like a Victorinox Farmer in there is hard to go wrong with. Well, don't get me wrong, I certainly do like my Victorinoxes, but one of my favorites is the Leatherman. Now, let's talk about some of the newer Leathermans first. And of course, the Surge has to be on the list because the Surge is a very well-known and very well-used multi-tool in the kind of bushcrafting and survival community. It is a very capable, albeit larger and heavier multi-tool, but you do have your outside accessible main blade and serrated blade, as well as your saw that can be interchanged with different bits, many different, uh, you know, things can fit into that little T-shake adapter. And then of course you have your scissors. Now this is a generation one surge. They did change a few things on the generation two surge. I do have both of them. I just usually prefer the generation one surge uh, for most of my tasks. So that is the surge overall. Another one that is a pretty venerable contender would be the Leatherman Super Tool 300. Now the Super Tool 300 is very similar to the Leatherman Surge. It has a lot of the same tools, but the biggest difference or kind of maybe drawback is that most of the tools are, or all the tools are inside accessible only. So you still have your good all, you still have a file, you still have a main blade, of course. I'm gonna get this one out of here. You still have your main blade, of course, and your serrated blade and saw and all that fun stuff. It's just all on the inside of the tool. Now the advantage to the Super Tool 300 is that it is a bit cheaper than the Surge, but kind of depends on what your needs are, what your wants are, because uh, I will say it definitely is handier to have the tools outside accessible, but the Super Tool 300 definitely is a really solid tool as well. So those are some of the bigger multi-tools in their collection. Of course, the Wave also exists and it's slightly smaller than this one. They also have the Charge, which is one of my favorite everyday carry multi-tools and I have a couple of charges as well, but I'm really beginning to become a fan of the old school multi-tools by Leatherman. And this one here is the PST. I have a super tool, the original super tool on the way. I actually don't quite have it to show here, but it will be soon in the collection and I really do enjoy these old school uh, Leatherman tools because they are smaller, lighter, a little bit more compact. They aren't quite as heavy duty, but for a lot of wilderness applications, you're not necessarily looking for that. So of course, uh, one kind of indicator to that is that all these tools are slip joints. So on the other newer Leathermans, all of them are locking or all tools lock. On this original tool, you know, they're all slip joints, but they are pretty resistant, it's pretty good. And realistically speaking, you know, if you're gonna be out there using a Victorinox, they're slip joints as well. But I really will say I do like the all on the older school Leathermans. It's very nice, very sharp. You also have a couple good um, bits for flathead screwdrivers. And originally I wasn't quite as sold on these, having as many flathead screwdrivers, but especially the kind of middle length screwdriver you can really use as a chisel and get in and do a lot of good woodworking with it. 
Uh, in addition, on the other side, you do have a good old file for striking ferro rods and doing stuff that you need. I think realistically, the only thing that this thing is really missing in my preference card, so to speak, is that I would really like a saw on this tool. So that's why the Leatherman PST I'm going to be replacing or kind of not necessarily replacing i'm still going to be keeping this one around but i'm going to be using the original super tool a lot more than the pst just because it does have the saw and a few other uh, kind of tools on it but the big thing is that the pst and the super tool the original super tool are around the same size obviously super tool is going to be thicker because it has more tools to it but they are very pocketable tools and very easy to carry and i want to get back to using and i definitely really enjoy carrying the pst so i wanted to have another tool that was similar but just slightly more capable so the super tool will be replacing this one for the most part on wilderness adventures but this one is also really fun to use too because it's not too terribly far off from things like the farmer's tool set so in it's not too terribly far off from the farmer's tool set, but you also get uh, a really nice pair of pliers. And I definitely like the original pliers on Leatherman's, things like my Gen 1 Surge, things like the original Leatherman PST. They have these really nice fine teeth to them, so they are very nice for wilderness working. Anyways, that is wrapping it up for multi-tools. There are there is their Leatherman and Victorinox or Swiss Army knives both can do a fantastic job depending on what your objectives are and what you're going after. Either way, they're fantastic tools and hopefully this video is kind of a little bit of change of pace. Like I said, I know we talk a lot about fixed blades on the channel, but there are a lot of venerable folding blades and multi-tools to use in the wilderness. As always, guys, God bless and I'm out.